Uh, today's community moment presenter is the veteran, the world record holder of community moments presented. I, I feel comfortable saying that because I know nobody in Kansas City has presented as many community moments as you. So um, he is the Lou Gehrig of community moments, um, Lou Kana. So let's bring him up and. Okay, this is uh, part three of three of uh, my Monarch Butterfly presentations. Uh, part two will have to wait. It's, well, there's, there's a little problem with part two. It's too long for a community moment and not long enough for a full talk. So I'm working on it. So um, I named this part after the movie. Clint Eastwood, Clint Eastwood movie, Good, Bad, and the Ugly. Um, so let me tell you how this relates to monarch butterflies. First, the ugly. This is the bad news. Can you all read this okay? Yeah. All right, save my voice. <laughs> Not good. Lou, why don't you go ahead and summarize it? Summarize it so that it gets on the recording. Okay. All right, this is the number of monarchs have declined dramatically in the last 18 years. The population was 1 billion in 1997. It is now down to 56 and a half million, the second lowest number ever recorded. That's the ugly. The bad is why. I missed one. Maybe not. Okay, um, the single greatest cause of the decline in the monarch population is the use of chemicals. Um, one of those chemicals is a key ingredient in Roundup. Um, it's called glyphosate, and it's only 1% of what's in Roundup. The rest of what's in Roundup is pretty much inert. Um, but it will kill milkweed along with a bunch of other stuff. So if you have Roundup or any other chemical with glyphosate in it, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Go to the website that says, um, let's see, um, Houston Solid Waste Facility, and it will tell you the two locations, maybe more in Houston, where you can dispose of safely chemicals like that, which is in Roundup. You know you don't throw it in the trash, right? Yeah, okay. Um, so don't use Roundup or anything else with glyphosate in it, because it will kill milkweed, and as you know, monarchs are 100% dependent on milkweed. Um, stop the illegal logging of the forests in Mexico. Um, the logging up until a few years ago was pretty much rampant, and these are the forests where the monarchs roost in the winter, November to March. Um, the, um, oh, back to glyphosate. Um, forgot this, I'm sorry. Uh, the chemical is used worldwide because of its effectiveness in killing weeds that choke off gardens, yards, and farm fields. Unfortunately, this includes milkweed. The EPA has never considered glyphosate's effect on monarchs. Now, some good news. In 1986, the Mexican government started a campaign to stop the illegal logging of the trees where the monarchs roost in the winter. Um, and loggers tend to take down larger trees first. And unfortunately, larger trees are warmer, fact of nature. And because they're warmer, they attract more monarchs. The trees buffer the drops in temperature and protect butterflies from rain and frost. So um, this campaign is partially successful, but where you've got predatory loggers, you're always gonna have predatory loggers. You can't be everywhere all the time. But it's helping. So um, another thing that you can do is to promote urban wildernesses. Much of the migration in the United States goes through heavily populated areas, 
like Harris County. Uh, monarchs are going through here right about now. April 16th seems to be like the Ides of Monarchs. In fact, um, I have some butterfly bush in my backyard and I've seen a few monarchs, which is pretty satisfying. Um, one of my favorite such areas is the Katy Nature Conservancy. It's about three quarters of an hour from here. You go at I-10 to Brookshire and head north and you'll see the signs. It's a pretty neat place. Um, one of the things they're doing out there right now is battling the incursion of uh, Route 99, the tollway, because it's going to cut through some land that they want to protect. So they're a pretty neat, they're a pretty neat outfit. It's a volunteer outfit. Um, they do good work. It's a lovely place to visit. And last but not least, plant milkweed. Um, if you place a screen such as a pop-up or a mesh laundry hamper between the milkweed and the wasp, you may recall um, there's a paper wasp that eats the caterpillars that are part of the life cycle of monarchs, and the screen will keep the paper wasps away. Um, cut back on your milkweed every spring after the first generation of monarchs arrive, March, April, May. And then again in the fall, before or during the migration, so that the butterflies will be encouraged to migrate and not overwinter here. Okay, the good. In March 2015, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service launched a $3.5 million campaign aimed at saving the monarch's habitat. If you go to the Fish and Wildlife website, there's a lot of information about monarch butterflies. Um, there's a, it divides the country into four sections, and if you go into, I think it's the southeast, which is Texas, Arizona, and New Mexico, you'll see what they're doing to protect endangered species such as the monarchs. It's a pretty neat website. Yeah, it's the southwest region. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, and then there's a, an environmental group, the Natural Resources Defense Council, has filed suit against the EPA to get the EPA to consider glyphosate uh, something that they can't use as a pesticide. Um, what's interesting, we had a speaker here quite some time ago, um, it's a friend of uh, TC's and I, who is responsible for developing genetically modified corn. Well, as it turns out, there is a form of genetically modified corn which contains something called a BT, that's capital B, lowercase t, toxin, and if you spray the corn with this pesticide, it will actually result in less pesticide use because the corn now produces a toxin that is toxin to major pests, like the European corn borer. So if we can wipe out the European corn borer, we won't need to put any pesticides on corn at all, um, thus reducing the use of glyphosate. Okay, now comes the fun part. Um, I found this little video on YouTube that I tell you, my whole monarch butterfly presentation, parts one, two, and three, take about an hour and 15 minutes. This summarizes everything that I've been saying about monarchs, including today. So let me see if I can bring this up for you. I, I, look, I can see part of the video here, it looks really cool. So, um, I mean, yeah. I see it on your screen. Actually, if you want to write down that address, I'll post it. Yeah, let's it's, post the link. Okay. It's about a guy who, who managed to upset a lot of farmers by taking 44 acres of land out of production so he could plant milkweed. It's oh. pretty neat. Thank you so much, Lou. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs>